from the moment you start Alan Wake 2, it has you immersed. Every element present, from the minimal UI, the stillness and emptiness of its environment, the eerie music, the sound design, the lighting, to even the sudden flashes of scratch, the main menu creates an off-putting experience that foreshadows the entirety of Alan Wake 2. There's a key aspect of the horror genre that can make or break its game, one that is mastered in Alan Wake 2, Atmosphere. Remedy Entertainment has a long history of creating unique, weird, and most importantly, strong atmospheres that have become synonymous with their games. And with Alan Wake 2, they honed in on the feelings of isolation, psychological horror, self-hatred, and hopelessness to immerse you in the most terrifying way. This is the chilling atmosphere of Alan Wake 2. Alan Wake 2's world can be divided into two main settings, Bright Falls and The Dark Place. Both of these places thrive in storytelling and creating the chilling atmosphere in different ways. Let's start with Bright Falls. Bright Falls uses its small town, nature-centric setting to play on the small town where nothing happens on the surface but is actually housing a dark mystery trope heavily inspired by media such as True Detective and Twin Peaks. Beneath its friendly exterior is a string of horrors that keeps you on your toes. Multiple disappearances and murders have taken place in Bright Falls, rumored to be by the hands of the Cult of the Tree, a mysterious faction that stalks the woods of Bright Falls. No one knows the extent of their power, only that they have a strong hold on Bright Falls. You see their symbol everywhere, stumble upon their hideouts and methods of serial murder, yet most know nothing of this cult, making their elusiveness turn Bright Falls into a town where you can never feel safe. There's also the Dark Presence, which constantly transforms ordinary people into the supernatural Taken, and if you don't act fast, more will be consumed. The moment you venture out of the town itself, the lingering threats of the cult and the Taken, combined with the total loneliness of the town exterior, constantly remind you that you're disempowered and always in the wolf's den. Locations of previous murders and unsolved disappearances become the staging point for the most frightening settings in the game, and even their histories alone push the unsettling atmosphere, further breaking down the welcoming small-town exterior of Bright Falls and showcasing its true horror. The fun, upbeat nature of Coffee World becomes infested with the dark presence, infecting all the park employees and even the two deputies, Mulligan and Thornton. The old bunker is filled with Taken that jump you at every turn, along with creating the most horrifying fight in the game. There's plenty more examples that showcase how the setting is constantly evolving and becoming more and more dangerous, feeding into the feelings of isolation and hopelessness. It inherently produces the feeling of literal isolation from the world, opening the doors for the most powerful aspect of Bright Falls' setting, Alan's story transforming reality. Alan wrote Saga into his story as the hero, who would save him and the world from the game's main antagonist, Scratch. As a result, the story slowly changes Saga's environment and her reality, realizing Saga's worst fears. Bright Falls cunningly gaslights Saga the further you progress in her story, constantly making her, and you the player, question reality. Is all of this just the story, or is Saga's unchecked trauma finally catching up to her? Moving on to the second main setting of the game, we have The Dark Place. The Dark Place is a supernatural, otherworldly dimension that is heavily influenced by creative works, including music and writing. It's a subjective manifestation that is projected differently depending on the individual which it's being explored through and this is seen exceptionally well through the mind of Alan Wake. The Dark Place manifests itself as a twisted blend of Alan's real world, combined with his critically acclaimed novel series Alex Casey, creating a dark, haunting film noir New York City. As Alan himself is a writer, he attempts to write his escape from the Dark Place by projecting himself into his own story. 
Throughout various locations in the Dark Place, Alan can write scenes to manipulate the setting and service his story, yet the Dark Place amplifies Alan's darker creativity, manifesting in multiple terrifying locales. From cult rituals to brutal murder sites, Alan's creativity becomes realized in the most horrifying way imaginable. Amplifying Alan's imagination in even further detail is his iconic lead novel character brought to life, Alex Casey. Throughout the Dark Place, Alan stumbles upon echoes, voice notes, and mirages of Casey describing the Dark Place in cold detail. While sometimes hostile to Alan, he isn't a threat, but rather Alan and the player's narrator of the grim setting of the Dark Place, just as he is in Alan's novels. His ruthless, callous narration feeds into the chilling atmosphere evoked by the Dark Place, and pushes the film noir mood that inherently carries this tone. Now while all of this plays a role in creating an eerie atmosphere, so too do the countless dangers Alan stumbles upon within the setting. The world is flooded with shadows, the main enemy type Alan encounters who are unpredictable by nature, most of them will only call Alan's name, but others, in the most conniving way possible, will ambush Alan, attacking him up close. The shadows don't only attack Alan, but constantly taunt him as well, telling him he's lost the plot, or this is their story now. They're a metaphor for Alan's self-perception as an artist, as he feels that he's lost creative control over his stories to his audience. He isn't steered by what he wants to write, but what the audience wants to read. It's their story now. The shadows aren't only a physical threat, but a psychological one as well. Moving on to another enemy, there's of course Scratch, who haunts Alan throughout the entire game, attempting to use him as a conduit to escape the dark place and corrupt the world in his cruel image. Scratch, originally written to be Alan's literal clone, transforms into an exaggeration of Alan's darker side of his personality, becoming a constant reminder to Alan of how much of a worse person he had become in the real world. Just like the shadows, he becomes a threat both physically and psychologically. Lastly, the Dark Place contains a less clear-cut antagonist in its setting, the Mysterious Caller. Throughout Alan's journey, the Mysterious Caller leaves ambiguous clues for Alan to follow. The Caller is later revealed to be Thomas Zane, a fellow writer trapped in the Dark Place and who is extremely unstable. At times, he seems like an ally, and at others, an enemy who is using Alan as a means to an end. You almost never know what his true intentions are, creating constant uncertainty as you navigate the Dark Place. Similar to Saga in Bright Falls, the Dark Place is a setting where, despite the ability to manipulate your environment, you are always disempowered and one where you always have to keep on your toes. Also just like Saga, on top of all the physical threats Alan regularly encounters, he is most importantly in a constant battle for his sanity. Everything from Alan's horrific writings, Casey's cold-blooded narration, the shadows who taunt Alan, Scratch who attempts to corrupt Alan, to even Tom Zane who uses Alan, the Dark Place is always trying to break him. Venturing through the Dark Place and seeing its impact on Alan as the player progresses through the game showcases just how strong of a threat it remains throughout the entire experience. It always shows the worst of himself on full display, from his failing marriage to his insecurities as a writer. Even when he fails in an escape, everything about the setting becomes more and more hostile. Warlandor is the perfect representation of this, shattering the talk show facade and becoming more hostile towards Alan. The setting of the Dark Place is alive and speaking to him, and doing so in an abusive manner. So the setting of Alan Wake 2 itself adds to its chilling atmosphere, and it also does so in a more literal sense through its environmental design. While Bright Falls and the Dark Place both torment the protagonists in similar ways, the actual design of these locations couldn't be more different. Bright Falls thrives on its open forest setting. 
It's filled with centuries-old thick trees that obscure vision and make you feel isolated in this seemingly giant labyrinth. The grimy rundown trails, sheds, and campsites further push the isolating feeling as they showcase the forest's abandonment and how little life there is in the forest. Then there's of course the more upfront details of Bright Falls, such as the gruesome murders and rituals performed by the cult that are scattered all over the forest. Speaking of the cult, as previously mentioned, you find their symbol and stashes everywhere, reinforcing their influence over Bright Falls. All of these elements together highlight how the environment is always providing contextual storytelling in a very eerie manner. It creates this feeling that you're a sitting duck surrounded in a huge world filled with threats. There's no safe place in sight, and you are always being watched. It's just you against the cult of the tree and the Taken. Now to revisit the Dark Place. The Dark Place is a manifestation of New York City, which is inherently more urban and crowded. It's filled with darkly lit skyscrapers that surround the player. The interior of any structure is tightly confined, as if the walls are closing in on you. The walls are deteriorating, tunnels are filled with rubble, and floors contain trails of blood. All this to say the environment is always reinforcing the dark tone. There's an ever-present feeling of claustrophobia that the environment evokes, and combined with the overwhelming amount of shadows and the knowledge of Scratch appearing at any point to ambush you, you feel so choked in, like you have no room to escape. Even the smallest of details are given plenty of attention to, and bit by bit make the dark place feel more alive, creating an immersive, eerie environment. Taking this a step further, there's an overwhelming amount of advertisements scattered around the dark place. Some are a reflection of Alan's past successes, and others, well, are a bit more sinister. There are posters that represent his self-deprecating view as an artist, reinforcing what he already tells himself and feels ashamed of. It's devilishly beating down on his already weak psyche, as if the constant attacks from Scratch and the Shadows weren't enough. The Dark Place is literally speaking to him, once again acting as not just a physical threat, but a psychological threat as well. He has dealt with this for 13 years more than enough to break anybody. An underrated aspect of Alan Wake 2 that needs to be quickly discussed is its user interface. A good UI is crucial in familiarizing yourself with a game, and in the case of Alan Wake 2, less is more. Throughout the bulk of the game, there are very few elements present on screen. Only the essentials are visible, which makes sense as Alan Wake 2's mechanics aren't complex, and even the elements that are present are in a smaller, off-white color all tucked in the bottom right corner. The design was intended to be minimal, so it never feels distracting to the player, letting you quickly get used to it. And this is a phenomenal choice. We don't look around and see our weapons, items, and manuscripts collected. We just get to focus on the world. It allows us to better take in all the previously mentioned details, further immersing us into the game. Lastly, the lack of visible elements makes it feel like the game doesn't even want to help us. It doesn't want to remind us of all the tools at our disposal. It takes a more realistic approach, making us, the player, have to actively keep track of what we scavenge in the world, making us feel isolated, and again pushing the eerie atmosphere. And of course, when we absolutely do need to interact with the UI in depth, it's always during a break of gameplay, such as sorting our inventory, so it never feels like we're pulled out of the experience. Now this is not unique to Alan Wake 2, as it is far from the first horror game to do this, so this is a praise to the horror game genre in general. No doubt a quintessential aspect of any horror game is its sound design. Alan Wake 2's sound design shapes its chilling atmosphere in a few ways, which are also quite diverse from each other. Some methods are more subtle, and others are more prevalent throughout its entirety. Let's start with its more subtle approach. 
Right off the bat, the foley of this world is incredible. The whistling trees against the wind, the damp yet empty sound of the underground, and countless other examples bring this horrifying world to life. And now looking into something more specific, there are plenty of sound effects for interacting with the world, such as opening chests or finding a clue for your case board. Two such examples that stand out, however, are Saga's profiling and Alan's plot change. Saga profiles quite a lot of characters, and if you go to the profiling tab and hover over each one, you'll notice that every character gets their own sound design. If you hover over a morally good character, you'll get a cleaner, more pleasant ambient design. Listen to the bookers, for example. Whereas hovering over an evil character gives you an unsettling, ultrich, bubbly-like design. Listen to the sound for Nightingale. Then there's of course selecting a topic on which to profile, and each profile again has its own sound. This time, however, it constantly feels like the audio is building up to a huge reveal and it's incredibly anxious. This is then finally rewarded with the audio of selecting the topic. Wake has a double. Mr. Scratch. Where is he now? A cloud of wrath wears my face. Everything goes quiet and we can finally be at ease. Rinse, repeat. Now, there's Alan's plot element change. Everything starts quiet, then when you select a scene, outstanding sound design plays and ends just as fast as it began. The reverberated typewriting, the rapid crescendo, and the sudden falloff gives the plot element change a horrific gravitas that makes sure it never gets old. Depending on the scene, some of these take it a step further and add even more horrifying sound design fitting with its context. So all of these components for both Saga and Alan may seem irrelevant, but the finer details are what help in creating a unified, cohesive tone across the entirety of Alan Wake 2. In their own right, these sounds are already unsettling, and combined with the rest of the game's more outstanding horror elements, these serve as the subtle yet constant reinforcers of the game's darker atmosphere. But enough about subtlety. Time to look at where the phenomenal sound design is put on full display. Alan Wake 2's overall sound design captures the appropriate horror tone. As mentioned earlier, throughout the majority of the experience, you always feel like you're in the wolf's den. And this is showcased very well when you, ironically, enter a location of safety. Silence and unease. Entering Saga's mind place, Alan's writer's room, or any source of light rapidly cuts all audio from the world, focusing solely on the location you just entered. It creates this limbo-like atmosphere that juxtaposes beautifully with the rest of the game's atmosphere. It doesn't make you feel in danger, but it doesn't make you feel safe either. It's as if the lack of diegetic sound and music is telling you, this is just a quick way for you to catch your breath. The moment you leave, we're throwing you back into the terror. The sound design functions as a method of storytelling. It's telling you that the safe zones aren't meant to pull you out of the danger, making you feel even more isolated in the dangerous world and reinforcing the chilling tone of Alan Wake 2. Lastly, it is impossible to discuss Alan Wake 2's sound design without analyzing its implementation of adaptive sound. There are plenty of occasions where the player triggers a song in the world and it builds up as you progress towards your objective. Arguably the best example of this is when you follow deputies Mulligan and Thornton. When the tailing begins, a minimal, creeping loop kicks in. It gradually builds up the closer you get to finding the deputies' hideout, adding more layers and increasing in volume. As the layers and volume increase, so does the stress of the player. 
it induces an anxiety that gets stronger and stronger along with an amazing buildup of suspense that creates chills from start to finish. Once again, it's an incredible tool of storytelling, telling the player they're getting closer and closer to their objective and towards the danger. It makes you feel like the most terrifying thing can happen at any second, and well, it does. Jump scares are scattered, which let you know the game is not bluffing. You will be getting ambushed, and there's nothing you can do about it. Factor in the story, with Saga discovering Mulligan and Thornton are a part of the cult, there's also the element of mystery. Everything combined has you constantly thinking, what the hell is happening? Where is this leading me to? Is this a trap? How are Mulligan and Thornton involved? And finally, the music suddenly cuts, and the reward for it all, discovering the truth. The cult is not what you expected whatsoever. The game elevates countless moments using this formula. This is how sound design creates the chilling atmosphere of Alan Wake 2. So, there we have it. Alan Wake 2 became one of 2023's best games, and maybe even the best horror game in recent years, for good reason. Remedy Entertainment put all their passion for game design to make sure every aspect of this game's world would make us feel uneasy. The setting laid the foundations for us to feel fear, the environment brought those foundations to life in a visceral way, the UI allowed for instant immersion into the experience, and the sound design paved the way for suspenseful storytelling from start to finish. 13 years spent building this game, changing time and time again until the tone was captured, Alan Wake 2 does everything right in shaping its tone. This has been Bilal from Game Rant, and this has been the chilling atmosphere of Alan Wake 2. We'll see you next time.